The past few years I have been using SQLite as my primary database engine. I love the simplicity of having the database that sits along my application. There is no complex service to manage, no external network communication, no firewalls to rules. It's just simple. However, one of the uh, concerns that I have with this approach is what happens that with the machine that is running your application uh, crashes or stop responding, you lose, access, you lose access to your data. This is why I wanted to share the approach that I've been using to have to work around that. This allows me to implement the 321 backup strategy, which is three copies of your data, one that it runs with your application, two copies in two different storage um, services or devices. And one of those copies being off sites or mean being a different provider, just you have more redundancy. Uh, for this, I've been using something called uh, Lightstream. Uh, it allows you to back up and replicate your uh, SQL database in real time to those different storage services. As soon as data changes in your database, those changes are going to be streamed into those defined locations. This way, if your server stop responding, it can automatically restore the data uh, on a new server, for example, uh, from those replicas. And in the case that the one of those replicas fails, you still have the other one replica that it can serve as the source of information. I wanted to show you how that works uh, locally using Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, but in the repository, I also included another example that uses fly.io Digital Ocean and Hetzner uh, object storage to um, store uh, the databases. So let's take a look to the local uh, Docker Compose file that shows uh, how the services are being defined. So you can see here we have the application. In this particular case, I'm using the image that's coming from uh, GitHub uh, Container Registry. Uh, I indicated the two dependencies to uh, replica one and replica two. Those are the ones that are going to simulate the storage um, services. Uh, and then I have a volume to store the data of this application. Next, I have the replica services. I'm using Bitnami uh, min IO service to replicate an S3 compatible storage. And of course, I also have a volume to store that data. And the same case for the second replica. It's exactly the same thing. Now, this one has uh, an environment configuration file uh, that uh, contains all the configuration for the services. So when this application container boots, uh, it runs this script uh, that basically checks the database path it creates if it doesn't exist, and then it tells uh, Lightstream to uh, to see if there is no database. It will try to restore from the replica in the case that the, the replica contains the data, and then it will start your application. It will start the replicate process, and it will start your application at the same time. Okay, this uses the following configuration file that defines two replicas, replica one and replica two, where it has the bucket, the endpoint, the region, and the access keys and secret keys necessary to connect to those storage services. Uh, in this particular case, uh, this is using the S3 compatible service. And all the settings that you see here, replica one endpoint, replica one region, and so on, are on this replica file that contains this uh, replica bucket name, the endpoint, the region, the access key, and the secret key. In this particular example, because I'm using that local, this is using replica one and replica two. Those are the name of the services that's running running min IO. Okay, so let's switch to the terminal, and we're going to be executing this uh, right now. So I'm going to do Docker Compose up. And this is going to start the two replica containers. And then when those are operational, it's going to start the application container. Okay, 
So now I booted up the application container and you can see the messages. It attempts to restore the database. It, does, it doesn't find any backup. Ex and then it starts a light stream that initiates the, the database, it initiates the replica, and then um, it starts the application uh, in order for us to, um, to run the service. So what we're going to be doing here, I'm going to be doing curl localhost 3000, and we're going to check that the database is empty. Okay, now that it's empty, let's add some uh, dummy jokes. I'm going to be passing a content first joke. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to do a second joke. Okay. So now if we query again the list, we have the two jokes, as expected. Uh, now that we have those jokes, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to do docker compose stop app. This is going to stop the application container that you can see here. It's just stopped. And we're going to be deleting the application container and we're going to be deleting also the volume that contains the application data. So we're going to do docker volume rm jokes app. And now that we deleted that, what we're going to do, we're going to start the application again. Docker compose create app. I created the app and we're going to start the app and now it launches the application. And we can see here that immediately it restore the snapshot from replica one, and then start the application. So if we inspect again with curl, we see our two jokes that are there. Now let's do something more extreme. Let's test uh, the removing one of the replicas and the application. So we'll do it again. We will stop the app and replica one. We're going to remove both app and replica one. And we're going to remove the volumes for those. So docker volume remove app and replica one. Once we did that, we're going to do docker compose create app and replica one. And we're going to start app. This of course is going to start the first the replica. And once that replica becomes operational, it's going to start the application. Okay, now we notice that on restoring snapshot, it didn't use replica one because replica one was empty. So it tried to use replica two and then it restored the database and it become operational. So let's now check again our database and we have the two jokes in there. Perfect. So now let's move on to a test that's going to use those external services that we were mentioning before. Okay, so I'm just stopping everything. And I'm going to show here, I already pushed this as a container image. And I already created a bucket on Hetzner Cloud. And I also created on Digital Ocean Spaces, I created that other bucket. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be deploying the container as an application. So I'm going to select the container image. I'm going to write down here the names. Next, I'm going to adjust the size of our uh, container because we actually don't need as many resources as they're being allocated here. So I'm going to select 
a small one. I'm going to adjust the port of the container to be 3000. Okay. And I'm going to copy the environment variables that contains the configuration for the two buckets. In this particular case, I'm going to open the secrets file that contains the credentials for the bucket on digital ocean as replica one and the bucket on Hetzner as replica two. I'm going to copy the credentials here, save it, mark it as encrypted because it's secret and then continue. And I'm going to deploy this to the London region. Okay, next and proceed. I'm going to create the resources for this. Now it's waiting for the service to be accessible. And on the logs, we can see that no matching backup was found because it didn't exist. And it's doing the replicate and things like that. And we can check here on Hetzner and DigitalOcean that are already created certain files. If we refresh here in files, it already created the necessary or the right ahead logs and the snapshots of the database as uh, when it started. Okay. And this is running, but of course, uh, we're going to go to this URL. This is the URL of our application. It doesn't have any joke I've expected. So we're going to be creating jokes on it. So we're going to be doing curl to that URL. Check. There is no joke. We're going to be doing the next X post with data content. First remote joke. Okay, it created a joke. Another remote joke. We have now two jokes. And the good thing about this is that now on this application, if we take a look to the runtime logs, every time that there is new additions to the database, it's going to replicate that to send that to the replica one and send that to the replica two. And those are going to generate the necessary files in order for us to be able to restore the database uh, if there's a problem. And the system is going to automatically generate snapshots and every couple of hours uh, to avoid having to play back all the wall files. Remember first there were like just three or four and now there are fives. And as I continue to add more data into the system, so say for example, I'm going to add a third joke. Oops. And if I refresh here, I'm going to have more pages or more uh, right ahead logs um, that contains all the changes that were added to the database. And you will find on the repository all the necessary instructions to uh, be able to uh, use this strategy on your application. And you will find more of the details on how to deploy this to fly. Well, I hope you find this useful. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something more.